Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to What's Up. It's uh, nice to have you. Thanks for coming and being with us. Greg, Braden, and I get together uh, every couple of weeks and just chat about what's ever on our minds. Uh, and uh, here we are again. Hello, Greg. How are you? Right. John, it's good to see you. I, I think you might be in my time zone right now. Are you on mountain time? I am. I'm in Utah. It's, it's a this strange kind of backdrop. Backdrop that, to, and I'm uh, sitting in a condo on Main Street in Park Park City, Utah, for a couple of days. Now we're usually a couple couple hours apart, so it's it's good to be in the same time zone. <laughs> I'm sure. So what's up? What you been thinking about? Well, you know, John, there's so much going on right now. I think. Um, you know, so many places we, we could go with our, our conversation. I have been watching closely the last couple of weeks, and I am absolutely amazed at how easily people, and many of those people are, are my friends and my colleagues, are being manipulated by information to make choices that are actually hurting them and hurting our, our nation. But the really insidious part, John, is they're using the information that's coming to them to turn upon their friends, uh, family members, loved ones. And what I'm, I'm watching, and I believe it's an intentional process, is the breaking of the vital social bonds that have always held us together, not just as a nation, but as a society, as a community, uh, as a family. And for some people, John, it, they're turning on themselves. They're betraying their own nature, the true nature of who they are. They're questioning uh, fundamental values, fundamental issues. And, and there's nothing wrong with the questioning, but it's the weaponization yeah. of the questioning that I think is insidious. And I I, you know, there was a time where I could write it off to an interesting time in history and maybe an evolutionary cycle. I think we're past that time. What I'm seeing now is the, the deliberate and intentional use of technology to destroy the fabric of society. And it's not just in America, uh, but what is particular, there's part B to this, the particularly insidious part of America is that the very freedoms that we cherish and that our nation has been built upon are being weaponized and abused and used against us, for example, the freedom of speech. So the, the speech that is out there, there are uh, some ideas that are being allowed and the technology is prohibiting through uh, filters, AI filters and things like that so that a very specific narrative is being driven and um that's what's on my mind right now so be, i yeah, want to talk well, about that a little bit yeah you've you've put your finger on the kind of the crux of the kind of uh, transition pro process it seems to me yeah. uh this uh, we're, we're we're moving through a period of time maybe five years ten at the most maybe that's a guess uh, where uh, all of us, um, it might be less, by the way, yeah. uh, all of us are essentially being presented with uh, fundamental decisions about who we are, who we are going to be, and those decisions are at the base. They are the platform for, uh, in the case of what you and I are interested in the platform for the emergence of a new human and a new world. And uh, this new direction, this vector is uh, by definition new and it's different. And so there is this, this transition, this, this kind of personal transitional process that we all have to go through to essentially extract ourselves from who we have been to uh, to, to identifying and embracing who we are uh, need to become uh, in order to, to, to you know, transit down this new track. What I'm seeing is so many people that I know and, and their dear friends and colleagues and our viewers will probably know some of these people because you've read their books and you've been to their programs, they are falling prey to 
this manipulation. They're getting sucked in to this game uh, where they are, and they are public figures of the public platform. So they're using their platform to voice their opinions based upon the narrow window of information that's been fed to them through the algorithms in their silo of information. And they're absolutely certain that they are absolutely correct and everybody else is wrong. And that is a microcosm of what I'm seeing happening in other places. This is how you break a society. You turn everyone against one another. Right. Ultimately, now with the, the questions of sexuality and maleness and femaleness, you're turning people against themselves, blurring the lines of things that used to be absolutely certain. And one of the things I'm seeing, John, and I am not seeing anybody talk about this, these conversations now have become fodder for presidential elections. They are important conversations. They're real. They're affecting people. We need to have them. In my opinion, they have no place in a presidential debate because this is where this is where the division happens because the, the presidential, the candidate's opinions, whatever those are, are going to go right to the primal, to the gut instincts of the constituents that are voting for them. If you look at the Constitution, the president's job is to ensure that we have a strong economy, to guard the borders for our security, and to ensure that the Constitution is upheld so that we have a nation. The president should not be involved in abortion, in my opinion, in transgender issues, uh, shouldn't be involved. They're important issues, but they're not presidential issues. Yeah. And this is how people are getting sucked into this, because these now have become presidential issues and it's being done in a kind of if you will evolutionary way rather than an ev revolutionary way that is to say piece by piece by piece yeah. is being laid in it's the you know the boiling frog business uh that uh to where uh if you're not sensitive i mean this is forcing it's those of us who are are really kind of thinking about this uh, to become really sensitive and constantly asking questions, where is this going? What's this is about? It's complicated by the fact that there's a clear kind of disinformation, if you will, uh, kind of operation that's in place here to try to sway people. The, the response to which should be to say, that doesn't make sense. I don't agree with that. We're not going to do that. But for, Everybody who gets gets to make a decision, whether it's explicit or implicit, uh, you know, you you are being presented with these things on a day to day basis that you got to respond to, and if you don't think about it, if you don't have, consider it, if you don't give the context to it, then they just sweep you downstream, and that's the objective here. But you make those decisions yourself. We as a society have been preconditioned yeah. for at least two generations to stop asking questions and to not think critically, uh, to, you know, to go with the flow. And it's really come to the the consequences of that have really come to uh, fruition now that this intentional effort is being made. and. So what, what I like to say to our community is, is to invite people to be aware of when and how they're being manipulated. We all are. But to become aware when they see a news, what they call news, that, that triggers them on that primal level, rather than unconsciously responding to that trigger, which is the intent, become conscious, become aware and say, what is this saying to me? Why does it, what am I feeling? Why does it make me angry? Is it true? Is it real? Does it make sense? Uh, I mean, common sense. Does it make common sense to me to, you know, to, to be having these feelings and then to use that as the launch pad to, to respond, to recognize the manipulation that, that's going on? It's happening on a, a national level as well, turning governments against governments and nations that have been allies, John, yeah. are, are now being turned into enemies. 
using exactly the same techniques and then being nudged by a false flag here or, um, yeah. you know, some something like that. Well, the, the, the kind of approach that I have found to, to addressing these kinds of things is to always ask the question, what are they trying to do? What is yep. this trying to produce? Um, you never take it at face value. You look at it and you say, uh, where is this going? Because everybody, you know, everybody, you know, I talk to you, you talk to me, and we've got reasons why we say and the approach that we take to, it, to each other. Uh, in the case of you and I, you know, we're trying to kind of stay in the space that we know that we all agree, we'll kind of work together with. Well, it's it's bigger than that is, or more acute than that uh, in this in this larger space, because what they're doing is is they have got a very clear agenda what they're going. And so when you hear when you see the headlines, you say, what is that trying to drive me to? What is they? What emotion is it trying to get? What are the what is the purpose behind the thing? And there's this kind of secondary and tertiary level of kind of thinking and exploration that you got to do. I think what will happen is we are going to become two separate societies. We're going to be one society that is all in on the AI and the digitalization and the gadgets. And we're, we're going to be another society that lives outside those norms, who is going to be agrarian, close to the earth, natural, yeah. uh, more natural healing. And those two societies will be at odds with one another for a period of time until it becomes obvious that one is healthier, uh, has a greater sense of well-being, more fulfilled in life. But I think we we will see, and we're living this this segregation. We'll have two yeah. societies, and well, it's, uh, it's, it happened in our lifetime. It, well, it looks kind of writ large, like uh, uh, the the Amish living in the United States right now, and how that they have their own unique kind of community and approach and philosophy, theology in their case, um, and uh, but I think that the the operative kind of issue is uh, in practical kind of terms is that it's non-threatening and that somehow there is this, you say over time, you get to the place where, yeah, those guys over there, they're over there, they're, but they're not bothering us. And so there is through this transition, some kind of a movement to where uh, you're not, that you're not considered threatening. And so you're kind of not on their radar in any significant mm. way. You know, Ray Kurzweil said uh, by the year, tw between the year 2030 and 2035, there will be no uh, pure humans remaining. Right. We will all be a hybrid of some kind of digital interface. And I, I think that may be true for one segment of the society. I think there is a segment that will not comply and that will resist will become the outliers still exist, but they will become the outliers. And as you see in the dystopian kinds of movies, they have to develop parallel systems. They have to have their own economic system, their own financial system, their own systems of transportation, because they're not allowed to use the systems that have been built or being governed right. by the, the digital technology. So you, you got to find another way of life. And that other way of life, almost by definition, has been cleansed from the the, the bots, the 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 kinds of uh, surveillance kind of capabilities and other things that, and so so you can't you can't ingest all of the stuff into your body and into your brain and everything and still effectively operate in that new space. And that's why, uh, almost certainly, I've already started to see some uh, really practical examples. There's technologies that are going to show up that are going to probably, using electronics, be able to to flush your your uh, your body of some of these kind of bots that uh, they, whether it's from chemtrails or however they've done it, uh, that uh, we all are carrying around right now. Mm. 
I know we're coming up on the close of our time here. I, yeah. I just want to say how very blessed and very lucky I feel I am to have you, people like you and you specifically in my life okay. so that we can have these conversations because I think it's, it's part of our mental health to be able to acknowledge what we're seeing and what we're feeling rather than keep it inside and feel like people are going crazy. Yeah. You know, and I, I, so I appreciate that, John, and thank you for this opportunity today. Likewise, thank you very much. And thank you for all of you who are our viewers today. We really appreciate it. We'll be back in a couple of weeks to do this. You can find out more about what we're doing at the Arlington Institute at arlingtoninstitute.org. And we hope you'll come back and be with us again. Thanks so much. Take care. Thanks, Take care. care.